when they get crossed and like every time one of us yeah. it goes it's to just, the other one. It just is what it is. It is, it is what it is. What is up, everybody? Welcome in. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah, do you have to go do back? You want to lower your <laughs> mic a little? <laughs> wow, what's going on? Welcome into the DNVR Nuggets podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook app. Use promo code DNVR when you sign up. Bet on all of our stuff. Watch our DNVR bet show. Watch our tailgate show. Make all of your bets. That's what I do, and I win money. I'm up like a, a G, solid over a G. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you should be able to get some pants fun. with that G. Wow. <laughs> you think I? You think I didn't dress exactly the way I wanted to dress today? Do you? Uh, you know me, Harrison. Come on now. Uh, I'm joined by the full squad here. I got Brendan Vote. You guys know him as Brendan. I did not want to dress this way today. I'm wearing a polo. I know. Uh, laundry day. I feel. <laughs> laundry day. Yeah. It feels like. Um, I don't know, like when a when a Satanist walks into a church and their skin starts burning or that's whatever. How you feel that's kind of how I feel yeah. with a polo on. Dude, I I feel that man. I really feel that. Yeah, man. Real, real connection. Over here, the man with the wind in his hair. I just noticed you and Vote have the exact same shoe, just different colors. Uh, is it exact same? I think it is, man. We have to look at this. I don't think it is. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Yours, your top of yours has like a left. No, I'm telling you, it's 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 incorrect. Yeah. He's got the we'll gold, out later. the gold lining. You have the the white. We'll do it live, uh, guys. We're late today, just a little bit, and it's not our fault. It's the Denver Nuggets' fault because today, guys, is media day. That's right, three media day three. Today's media day again. Again, <laughs> this yeah. is Groundhog Day. But today we got it, it was maybe the most interesting one. I mean, Yoke. Let's be honest, guys. The top human. He was extremely interesting. Yep. Always. I didn't get to t- dish on that, so I'm sure I'll give my perspective a little bit today. No, oh, but we also had Michael Porter <laughs> right. was interesting. I thought Will Barton was fan- absolutely fantastic. Aaron Gordon absolutely fantastic. So well, we got four role players today. Yesterday we got two. We got Yoke, but we got the two two way guys too. Right, we got right, four yeah. actual guys. That's right. Who are going to be playing real minutes and and some star players. So. Yeah. Um, you know, let's just dive right into let's it. I want to start with Aaron Gordon because mm. um, he's the one we kind of know the least. And my, here's my first yeah. note. Here's my first note, guy. Usually I'll ask you what's your biggest takeaway. The guy could not be more chill. Yeah. It's the, unbelievable. <laughs> truly unbelievable. He walks in and this is his first line. He goes, what's up, everybody? What's up? What's Big up? smile. Flashes yeah. a peace sign. A little peace sign. He's it's, got the fro going. I'm serious about that. I said this the other, like last week. I think we're underselling just how interesting Eric Gordon. Like, mm. we didn't just add a fourth, you know, the fourth best player on the roster. We also added like a super interesting guy, and I, that hasn't quite fully come out today. But you kind of saw it. He's just, yeah, he's a character. But his vibe, his chill vibe, is so emblematic of just how he's meshed so well right. with this team. Totally. Because that was the thing when he came to Denver last season. He said time and time again. I don't want to like fit out to steal a line from LeBron James. I want to fit in, you know? And so that's just every, that was everything he did last year. He didn't want to take too many shots. He didn't want to be too high usage. He just wanted to play his role. And that just lines up with his personality so much. And it's another reason why he's such a good fit here because it, he's not that big yes. you know, personality. Look at me guy. Yes. He is flashy, right? The music videos are flashy. Yeah. His play style is flashy, but his personality it's very, very chill. And there's a subdued kind of thing with the Nuggets. I know not everyone, Porter and Bones, don't quite have fit into this. But we talked about it on the show yesterday. We'll get to this with Jeff Greed comments today. But they're all comfortable flying a little bit under that radar. Oh, man. And even Aaron Gordon, who you might think of as a Hollywood dude, it's a little more SoCal bro vibes than Hollywood vibes. A lot more, I should oh, say. Uh, oh, a ton more. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he is like the most chill person on the face of the planet. He just has... That's why I say he's a character. Yeah, man. like he definitely walked out of that media session, got on his longboard, and just <laughs> skateboarded home. You know whose energy? While he has? probably listening to some Ska. LA like Tupac, Ska. like Tupac or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you guys remember um, the video that went viral, the TikTok video of the guy drinking ocean spray and, and <laughs> yes. writing? Like that's his vibe. Dude, that's, that's Aaron it. Gordon's vibe that's at all it. times. It's just like, yeah, oh. man. That's so good. I love it, man. That I, should, I, I really that, like that should be a. A DMVR. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Photo, <laughs> photo, get, photo. On, we'll get on, on that right away. Uh, have you guys also noticed? <laughs> I mean, I wonder if there will be a uh, a point, a line in the sand or in time where this kind of changes. But 
he's still so enthusiastic about being here and about answering questions about his enthusiasm. Can you do an Eric Gordon when he was asked about why he signed here? Do you remember what it said? Oh, man. Do the line in the voice it's a long in the face. list. Yeah. Is that... Where do I start? How could oh, I start? Where do I so start? many different things. Um, <laughs> like... But shh. Jokic, man. man Jokic. <laughs> uh, I like every time we do an impression, our ice. <laughs> we do this For some thing. reason. Aaron, let's hang out. Uh, yeah, he really seems to want to be in Denver still. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He really... I mean, I guess he did just sign an extension, so that's not really. Yeah. What else stood news? out about his media availability other than him being the chillest bro <laughs> to ever chill? So I asked him about his ankle yes. and yes. how much that affected him last year because we had heard a little bit about that. He had talked about that a little, but it was probably undersold a tad. And he said straight up, I felt like I was playing on one and a half feet last year. I couldn't really jump off that foot. And he's healthy now. Uh, we've seen him play some pickup this summer, most notably with Adam Sandler. So I don't know how much you can take from that. I was bummed nobody asked him that question. Oh, yeah. That's, that's more of an yeah. in-person scrum question. Yeah, you know, a sidle question. That, yes. Yeah. Okay. So what it, what was like on the set? Do you yeah. dunk? Because I'm curious this. Do you dunk on Adam Sandler if you have Hell an opportunity? Hell yes. Yes? Hell Wait, yes. What about this? I mean, Adam Sandler's a hooper. Do you? Tra- yeah, right. <laughs> Do you trap Adam Sandler in the corner? Uh, no, he's too good a passer. Oh wow! You don't do it for scouting report reasons. Yeah. I just meant like no Sandler's because we're playmaker. taking it easy on him. He's not no, no, a he's a come on. <laughs> he is a playmaker. You don't know he's double high on Sa- the Sandler roll. can ball. He can. Wow! I've yeah. seen some YouTube. So that wasn't just the ankle though, Harrison. He also mentioned a hamstring. In fact, yes, but the, yeah, the hamstring was was in Orlando. Was yeah. last off season. Oh. I think that was a little bit ago still. But but the ankle is big because such a big part of Aaron Gordon's game is being athletic and flying around at the rim and being a factor just being ag- aggressive, going to the hoop. And that hindered him a little last year. So I think there's a lot more athletically than he can do than he showed w- when he yes. got to Denver last season. I was so glad you asked him that because it felt like we've talked about the ankle around Aaron almost, like through Malone. And blah, blah, blah. and I was like, well, maybe someone should just talk to Aaron. And so to get that direct answer, yeah, just to run through it again, he said his lift was poor. Yeah, He said something about being more of a side-to-side player. Right, than he said South. he was going more east-west instead of north-south, north South. which is is understandable if, if you think about it. Like, that makes sense. And also how... how um, tightly packed together the schedule was last yes. year didn't yes. allow him to rehab a ton and that is why you saw him take a random game off i think there were maybe two occasions where he took a random game off at the end of last season just because you didn't have the off days to get your body right and we want to piece some things together you know we've heard he stood out in these runs yeah and he's also told us today he's healthier we joked yesterday that probably means he's dunking more but now you would think. But like seriously that probably is what it looks like yeah. he looks really really spry well you know i've he poked around a little bit. Just ask some guys what, what, who's standing uh-huh. out. Not not just on the on the screen, but I'm saying like you know you text some people, say hey, what's standing out? And the one name that is consistent is Aaron Gordon. Uh, yeah, all the things he's saying about being healthy is that yeah he really pops athletically in these. Like just you could see how much more explosive he looks, and he looks like you know at times the best player out there. So that's just cool because anytime Aaron Gordon is the best player on the Nuggets is like a bonus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like he's not here to be the best player. Yeah. So when the Knights, but he has it in him where every now and then he's going to go three for three from the three point line or beat his guy, this or that. And I just, it's really encouraging, man. I, this was such an encouraging day. I felt like of media availabilities and it started with him where I was just like everything he's speaking right now. I'm just loving. Yeah. Just his, his total vibe. He's clearly happy to be here. He's in a good headspace. He's got the contract taken care of. So that's, you know, not even an issue when guys are in contract years. I think about this with PJ Dozier a lot coming into the season. You want to put up numbers. Right. Like it's important to be on a winning team and to look good in that respect. Sure. But at the end of the day, for a lot of these guys, you get paid off the numbers you put up. Totally. And so you don't have to think about that with Aaron Gordon this season, which I think is a big positive. If I could or had to, if there was a cold glass of water to be poured here, let's hear it. You actually asked Aaron Gordon what his favorite thing to do is on the basketball yeah. court. Yeah. I don't think this is a cold glass of water, although it is an interesting topic. So, yeah, I wanted to know, what is it you like to do? It's important to ask players what they like because we all have him pigeonholing for when we talk about Aaron Gordon, it's like, okay, he's off ball. He's a third or fourth ball handler, you know, whatever. He did have an interesting question when I asked him that. He said, I like I like handling the ball. Right. Like I like, And the way he talked about it was beating guys off the dribble, getting guys turned around, and then making plays. He said second is, is passing. 
making plays off of that. And it is interesting because I don't know how much that's his role here. Right. A little bit attacking closeouts for sure. Sure. I think a little bit as a secondary and third ball handler in a continuity offense. But I don't know that he's going to have a lot of, hey, you have a weak defender on you. Just take him. Just shake him and get to the hoop. I don't I don't know. So it was an interesting yeah. answer. He could do that a little more with Jamal Murray out. But still, it's not close to the top of the list of things he's If Jokic is on the court, do. you literally don't need that from him. Right. Aaron Gordon, he is an absolute play finisher in, right. in the Nuggets offense. You've got a lot of guys who can start plays. Monte, right. Will Barton, Nicola, even Porter to an extent, or pro- probably actually not Porter. But Gordon is the the quintessential play finisher in a Jokic-style offense. And I, you know how he actually approaches this on the court, I think, matters more to me than how he answered your question yeah. today. Yeah. A lot of evidence in the folder of... He, perfectly fine in the role he's in and he knows what that role is i just mean to say it was the first like incongruent thing he said with everything else we've heard about his approach because last season there was you remember there was one or two uh plays every couple games where you were like that's Orlando Magic Aaron Gordon. Right, right. Yeah, Did the step yeah. back between the legs, yeah. three pointer. It wasn't many. It wasn't yeah. very many. It at was all. like one or but two plays a week. It stood out. Right. When you saw him, you were like, oh, okay. Because for the most part, he yeah. was exactly the role player totally, that Denver yeah. wanted him to be. But there were those couple plays where you're like, oh, that's that's 2018 Aaron sure. Gordon. That being said, I do think there's room for him in this offense to handle the ball. I just think it's in pick and rolls, and it's in attacking closeouts, and it's in those types of things. Transition, maybe. Transition, bringing the ball to court, even initiating the offense. So I do think that he can be the first, like not the main part of of a possession, but you bring the ball up, and it's like, hey, our first thing is – you know, you're going to turn the corner on a step up screen from Yoke. And if you can turn the corner and get to the rim, go. But if not, then you're pitching. And yeah, like, right. there's room for him to do stuff, you know? Yeah. And I, you know, I liked, I don't mind, yeah, the ball handling if his mind is towards making a play for someone else after beating someone off the dribble. It's, it's about the ISO just sort of calling your own number. Well, here's what I think about Aaron Gordon. And this is the part of his game that I think I saw last year that I didn't know about. And I, I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic we're going to see more of it. You know, Andre Iguodala was not like a great passer in that he, you know, he was the number one guy and like, oh my God, look at all these passes he's making. But he's very good about keeping the ball moving and making quick reads to get it where it's going to go. I saw that in Aaron Gordon's game last year a little bit. And I wonder if that's a thing we see a little bit more. If it's just him catching the ball on the move, because I think he's a better player if he's on the move. He's not like a spot up need to be still. If he can like be running into the catch. He's going to be getting a lot of scramble defenses, and I think that's where he could start making quick one dribble pass, one one dribble lob, one dribble whatever. And I think that's a part of his game he really likes. So the ball handling, we'll yeah. see. We'll see if he does more of that. I think the passing part will will shine a little bit. He more has here. said that he thinks he's an underrated passer. It's a part right. of his game that nobody right. talks about that he thinks he can, you know, show off more. And going from Orlando to Denver, th- this is a system that, like you said, based on how the offense is going to be in his role. There's going to be a lot more opportunity for him to make easy reads, but also smart reads. Right. Easy reads, like not the keys to the offenses in your hand, but you're a tertiary playmaker. You can keep the ball popping. Yeah. They're going to be there for him. They're going to be there for you to. Yep. Is there anything else that stood out from his availability for for the review, too? Are those the big things? Those are definitely the big things. To get that, I think, direct quote from him on the ankle was great stuff. That's what we needed. Yep. Anything else from from your notes? No, that's all I got. Like you, I've heard he's looked good in these runs, which which I think is encouraging. If he's popping this early, that's that's great. Yeah, really excited for it. And his energy was great. So I talked about going back to the first two days. I felt like some guy Bones was so excited to be there. Like you could just tell his energy is going to be one hundred. Some of the other guys, including Jokic, you could tell the energy. It's not that they're bad. It's not that there's like an emotional funk. I'm not saying that. You could just tell that they're like not necessarily enthusiastic about the next month ahead. We're games start in a month, real games. The next month is training camp and conditioning drills and preseason and all this. And you could tell they're all just kind of like whatever. I feel like Aaron Gordon is excited to be here. He's like yeah. ch- chomping at the bit to get started. Also, so who, who do you think did not sound kind of excited other so than who all have we talked to because the only ones i think are bones and gordon there's another one or two coming up but those yeah. two well like marcus no marcus but he's also just doesn't have enthusiasm right but i wonder it's because yoke has been in town for a while now right. aaron gordon just got into town 
Uh, same no, with Will. No, same with Austin. I don't think that's it, though. I, I think it's more about, I mean, look, Yoke had an exhausting two-year run. And he had a short off season, and he has life things coming around the corner for him. I just think for him, he's like, this is. It, it's not that he's like doesn't want to be here. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying that he's like doesn't have that energy of like, whoo, I'm waking up an extra hour yeah, early. Before Yoke's first never day gonna camp, have. Yeah, know, Yoke's never gonna have that. I mean, I mean, for Gordon, he's probably never spent a summer looking forward to a season the way he is right, right. now. At least, I definitely agree. not in his pro experience. I agree. So that I think is to be expected. We'll, I don't want to. We'll talk. We'll talk about him in a second. Barton, of course. Yeah. There's a redemption path there, so he's excited. But I think, you know, you're going to hear a lot of people talk about like when you talk about these last two seasons that just happened. Mm -hmm. They're clo they're closer to one long season right, than they totally. are two distinct ones. And I think just trying to take all of that into account when trying to get a read on where these guys are at mentally, um, I just. You know, I can't blame a single person for getting up there and being like, man, it felt like a short break. Right. You oh, know? of course. Because it course. did. I'm sure it did. Uh, let's hit a break. On the other side, though, Will Barton might have. I don't know who stole the show. There was a lot of good interviews today. This was the best day. This was the best media day we've had in, in one in, in three days. Um, <laughs> but we're going to talk about Will Barton on the other side. Oh, oh no. God. Oh, God. No. no, dude. I already sat This on gnome is just dude. getting assaulted yeah. day in, day out. Is the thing closer today or something? Maybe you grew. Did I grow? It is Media day. It is media day. I you added a inches. couple inches and I 10 pounds. Two inches. Speaking of which, RJ Hampton, two inches taller, allegedly. Oh, so I should kick this away? Yeah, you can. All right, there we go. <laughs> Just kick it away. Uh, guys, we're now sponsored by Ball Arena, across the entire DNVR network, uh, as in the aerospace technology companies and the world's largest aluminum cannon packaging manufacturer. If you don't know, Ball has been le leading global sustainability efforts for decades, and they are adding line capacity to their 400-person plant. Right here in Golden, Colorado, uh, the demand for sustainable aluminum beverage cans, it's greater than ever, and chances are if you've consumed a beverage in a can, it's been from a Ball aluminum can. Do you, Who hasn't consumed a beverage from a can? Uh, this is like the people that say they've never had probably McDonald's. some people I grew up with in Boulder. Really? <laughs> <laughs> <There's been laughs> do you think honestly? Do you think there's a single person on Earth who's just never had a can? Like, what is sure. this thing? What sure. is this huh. container yeah. of sorts? <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Um, yeah. So they're adding line capacity to their 400-person plant here in town. They're hiring product technicians to make even more aluminum beverage cans uh, they already make the 8 12 and 16 ounce can sizes for all kinds of liquids they make cans in 30 different sizes at facilities across the world the golden plant makes 8 ounce 12 ounce sleek cans 24 ounce growler 12 and 24 ounce cans of lumatech bottles several different can lint sizes if you want more information jobs.ball.com and search for golden or you can text golden to 77222 um, at DraftKings, take advantage of this offer for week three of uh, the nfl uh, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. They're kicking off another week of action by giving all new customers another can't miss offer. Bet just $1 on any football game this week. Receive $150 in free bets instantly. Instantly. You make the wager, the game gets played, $150 in your DraftKings account instantly. Can I tell you another boost? Go Tonight, 20% 20 20 profit boost on Thursday watching night football. A baseball game right now? No, dude. 20% profit boost on you Thursday night that. football. The only reason, in my opinion, to watch Thursday night football. There's a night football. It's great. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DNVR to receive $150 in free bets instantly when you place a $1 bet on any football game. Promo code DNVR to get $150 in free bets instantly at DraftKings Sportsbook. Only this week, just this week, week three. An official sports betting partner of the NFL must be 21 or older, Colorado only, new customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. All right, back here, second segment. And today, I think the uh, winner of Media Day, day three, was none other than the Reverend Will the Thrill Barton. The third. The third. He was incredible. I mean, he's always incredible. We knew this. Like, as we were gearing up for Barton, we we're like, oh, man, we're going to get some bangers today. And, like, he showed up ready for it. And here's what I will say. Yeah. There's some players. I think Bones is very excited to be here. We talked about Gorn and this or that. I I'm surprised. Will Barton, maybe the most energy to get this thing going. 
He seems so energetic and excited for the season. And I'll be honest, he's a veteran, man. I did not expect it. So I'll try to shed some light on why I think that is. Last year, he came into training camp after an even shorter offseason. And last offseason, he barely touched a basketball. He was rehabbing. I don't think he really knew the kind of player he was going to be last season, entering the year. This year, because of health, he was like, I'm not sure if I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. This year, he's healthy. He had a normal offseason, like, got to play five on five. I think he's confident in his game, confident where he stands with his role with the Nuggets coming into this season, kind of where he fits on that hierarchy. And I think his health is a big reason why. Just not having that cloud of uncertainty puts you in a much better space. I think he's in that space. And I think. You know, such a rough stretch for him with injuries. He gets on the court just in time to play well in that Sun Series. Now, it doesn't add up to much, but he gets to feel himself playing well on this stage where it matters. And I think it's that taste, that reminder. You know, we talked to him after that contract extension. I asked him, you know, how important it is to him to to contribute in a playoff run. The one thing he has really yet to do in a Nuggets uniform. Nothing's more important to him at this stage in his career. That's what he told us. So... Not he even so, mentioned, like, you know, Jamal's had his moment, Yoke's yeah. had his moments. I just haven't had any. Yeah. And I think I think it all it's all of these factors create a, a circumstance where, like you said, he's almost got that Bones Highland freshman energy to be back out there. And like you told us today, he wants to relish the whole thing. He doesn't want to skip to the playoffs. Yeah, man. I don't want to skip no steps, is it, the quote. He, he was talking like he's a rookie, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. He, was, he said... I want to finish first in all the sprints. You know, I want to win every <laughs> shooting drill. That's usually stuff that you yeah. hear rookies and some vets say. But Barton said he feels rejuvenated. Don't you think the best that, he's felt in two years? So, uh, don't you think th- these things go hand in hand? In that, you know, the last off seasons he hasn't got to do. I mean, one, another guy we're going to talk about is Michael Porter, and Michael Porter is a guy that I think might love the off season as much as he does the on season. Like he just loves being in the lab. And I think Barton does too. And that was sort of taken away from him over the last 18 months. Mm-hmm. And I just wonder if that's the appreciation where he's like, I didn't used to appreciate training camp yeah. and appreciate all this. And when I couldn't do them the way I wanted to, and, and also, you know, he's 30, he might be seeing the end of the, the road for him, you know, hopefully years down the line for him, but he's now at the age where you could start to see like, Hey, I can yes. see that. Yeah. And I just wonder if he's like, man, I'm going to cherish this. I'm going to cherish yes. totally. the, well, the running yeah. Hills and everything. When you get something taken away from you, yeah. you cherish it and appreciate it even more. Like when we couldn't go to a sports bar for right. a year and a half, right. when we finally could again, it's the best thing in the world. Yeah. Now, yeah. now with, with Will, when he you know hasn't been healthy in himself, now that he is, you, you just cherish it even more. I think that's it, man. I think it's a recognition of opportunity, meeting a, a, an acute awareness of his basketball mortality. Something I think he's been forced to really look face to face, you know, these last few seasons, and it's just created. I think, yeah, just this this attitude of I'm not going to take any of this for granted. It was exciting. It was refreshing to see from a guy that deep into it. You know? Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, his energy was, was infectious. I'm excited that there was somebody that was as excited as him. Like it really honestly gave me some energy. Um, oh, well, Chris Marlowe. Yeah. Uh, he won, won today as yeah, well. Yeah, he won today as well. Uh, asking Will and saying, Will, it looks like your shoulders look a little more filled out. Will absolutely loved hearing that. Uh, he, he said he offered him to buy dinner. He offered to buy Chris Marlowe dinner. Do you know how great that dinner's going to be? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's an incredible dinner. When Will Parton wants to buy you something, you say yes. Uh, not that I would know, but I'm sure it's pretty <laughs> dope. So, yeah, and uh, and he, he said he is. He says, I'm a skinny guy, so it's hard for people to notice, but I have it at a little weight. He and everyone else at Media Day. Yeah, he said he had added 10 pounds. About that's the magic number they love to give oh, us. Oh, so it? true. Yeah, ten pounds <laughs> is the magic number. <laughs> I not too much, not too little. Yeah. What else stood out? Anything else from from Will today? Um, I feel great about him. I've you know I I've said this before. I think he's in line for a career year, and today today I'm like I'm putting I'm stamping that stamping it on the board. Yeah. Uh, the overall theme was you know he thinks this is the year for him to get back on track and become the player that yeah. you know he has always been, but hasn't been able to show through the injuries. So I I just think he's in a great space. Um, That has a lot to do with the health. That has a lot to do 
I think with just where his standing is on the Nuggets and the rotation and the pecking order. Yeah. And um, he's just comfortable, yeah. I think. Uh, Michael Porter is the next one up. Um, he was interesting as well. Talk about a guy, another guy that's excited. I think if you ranked the guys on the team in in terms of how much they love the game of basketball, mm. I don't know. I don't want to say like he's number one, he's number two. But in the top tier is Michael Porter. He's yeah. up there with Will Barton, probably yep. Bones Highland. You know, like those guys truly love the game. I, I honestly think that it's Michael Porter's first, second, th- third favorite thing about life is basketball. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you got that sense today that he took a week off. He said to heal that injury that he was dealing with in the Phoenix series. He's referenced it a few times now, but then immediately got into the lab and just started working. And it was very specific what he worked on. Dribble moves to get free. He talked about how working on his handle and specifically with dribble moves. Um, and then also the mid post because in the playoffs, he felt like that was an area that he could have taken advantage of when they went small. Norman Powell was a smaller guy and he just couldn't, you know, couldn't do this or that. So I thought it very interesting insight. Right. Those are two great areas for him to work on ball handling. We've talked about that a right. lot on this show and that can really just open up so many more aspects of his game. And the mid post thing was interesting. He also mentioned how he wants to do some of the stuff that Mello does. He yeah. invoked Throughout Mello. Carmelo Anthony's name. Yeah. As somebody, you know, he can take some stuff from, which I think is cool. And uh, it, it's funny because you mentioned the Norm Powell matchup, but he's a 6'11 starting small forward. Right. right. Inherently, he's going to be guarded night in, night out by smaller players. Right. I, I don't Or th- is there another 6'11 small forward in the league? You know, I don't know. So... Just night in, night out, he's going to have a matchup advantage, a height advantage. So that's a great area for him to be focusing on. That's true. And he's not going to necessarily blow right past those guys or bully any of these guys really low into the post. But if he can get comfortable just turning around and rising up. The turnaround, the footwork in the mid post, that's all going to be big for him because he can rise up over anyone. Yeah, I mean, a smaller guy is not contesting that shot. So that I, I thought that was interesting. I'd also noticed that in his workout tapes this summer. He was working on those moves quite a lot. And then the ball handling is, I think, the top thing fans wanted to hear at home. So right. it was going to be a bummer but, if he didn't say ball handling. But ball handling, is there's a lot of different types sure, of ball handling. Sure, and sure, it sure. sounds like the type was more of an isolation ball handling, which is, a, you know, he's an isolation player. so Or he, he really can improve to be an isolation player. So uh, to me, I have no problem with that. We saw some of the video that we – I wish we saw even more of this video. I'm so curious. Because the one video that was posted the other day by his trainer, Michael Messer, was – really impressive like the the moves he was doing with with the ball were really really like oh man that's a tight handle that's a really complex move and he seems to have all of the little pieces of it down he is in the kobe bryant mold in the even kyrie irving mold of these guys who clearly love the details of basketball they're not just out there like oh here's a move i'm doing moody was the opposite of this where you could tell moody had little moves and you're like dude it's the sloppiest move ever. Like, you clearly don't have it. Yeah. It's Kobe, the moves that don't get you anywhere or do anything. It's not even about do they get you anywhere or this or that. It's just like you clearly said mission accomplished when you were at the 50% right. completed. Right. You know what I mean? You're I like, got okay. this move in my bag. And you're like, no, man, there's little subtleties. And I think Michael Porter is more the other type where it's like, I don't move on until everything. And then like, I'm going to take video and look at it from another angle. Is this, nope, yeah. this foot can actually come in a little. I think he's like a very very technically detailed person like that. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I mean, it's, you don't get to being the type of shooter and the type of offensive force that he already is at this stage in his career, just by half assing it and not focusing on every little detail and breaking down your own film. Like you don't get there without doing all that. I see this question in the, or this comment here, uh, Sambor shuffle by MPJ like to see that man. (laughs) If I was his publicist or just like somebody that was trying to advise him, an advisor of sorts, I would say, hey, man, just work on the Sambor and bust it out. Don't do it all the time. Just do it once or twice. Because can you imagine how hyped we will be if we see Michael Porter knock down a Sambor? Do you know how exciting that would be? It would be unreal. It would rival. uh, Points to Yoke and it's like my guy. Yeah. I, That'd that, be wild. That's Q score. It moves his Q score up 10 points. That's the right answer to that question we'd be getting. What's the perfect Nuggets highlight? Oh, my God. You're <laughs> right. That is it. That's it. Man. It's a Michael Porter Sambor shuffle. Point to you. The, the reaction in Ball Arena, when the, if that would happen. Oh, 
What could Yoke do? It would rival the the Nick Young three pointer reaction. Uh, offensive rebounds, putbacks. <laughs> just pull up three, just like a crazy. Or no, his sidestep. His what side do you think Yoke like... would think of Michael <laughs> Porter doing the sambor? Would you think he would be mad? Yeah. <laughs> I think he'd be a little like. What the heck? You do no. not work on that shot. No, I love it, man. Are you kidding me? If he started doing it, I would be like, I would be so, I'd be so pumped, man. Yeah, Plum dog hitting it, the it three would be level his, It would Let's just go. be another unblockable shot in his arsenal. <laughs> he, that's the thing is Porter jumps forty inches in the air and he's six eleven. He doesn't need the sophomore shuffle. He yeah, just the jump shot that everyone's like, I can't block that. Yeah, um, but you know what? Q score goes up. What else from Michael Porter? Something? Anything else stick out to you today? Well, let me run through these quotes. Off the he top was asked of about head. the extension. Didn't really have a oh, lot yeah. to say on it. And that it was such a hot button topic at the very start yeah. of the off season, and it's kind of cooled a little bit. Um, no, it's a hot but yeah, look. No, but compared to where it was right after the season when Doncic signed it, right. and when you're like, oh, they're going to take care of this right away, it cooled from there. But it's still, yes, a very pressing issue. His his answer. I'll give you a couple of quotes and then just the, the general tone of it. Quote, it's a thing that's on the radar, but I try to let my agent do his job. Um, I love basketball. Essentially that's went on That's the right to, answer, though. Which, yeah. He, he, Porter basically said, look, I'm just focused on getting better. That extension will happen. There are people I have hired to make that happen. So he said, I am in yep. the loop on it. Hopeful it happens, but I'm he, he's not stressing over that part of it. He's just trying to get better. Yeah, I would love it if it came out before trading camp. I mean... Maybe the key is it's our, it's up to us guys. We need to ask this every day of media availability with Michael Porter until he's like, so the whole team right, is so right. worn down. Like we like, just got to do fine. this. Fine, we'll uh, do it. Or yeah. we run him out of town. We'll or see. we running out of yeah. town. Yeah, that might be the thing that happens. Do you yeah. have any other notes on him? Um, I feel like there's more. We're something leave out. he said also to go along the things with that he's worked on is no great player just only works on yes. their strengths. Right. Which I thought was a great quote. Really great quote. And yeah, I mean. All the greats, man. You pick out your weaknesses and you work on those day in, day out while also working on your strengths. But it's so important uh, as an ascending player like Porter is just to be aware of your weaknesses because you can get lost in the shuffle. Oh, I'm this great shooter. Um, I'm a 40% guy from three. I can rebound. You know, I'm trying to get paid. Let me just do those things. Uh, but you're only going to become the player that he wants to be and the all around guy if you work on your weaknesses too exactly what you want to hear also he was asked about the most improved player hype mm, this was a good one yeah. he eventually worked his way to quote i'd much rather have a ring at the end of the season than any individual award um up front he said i would rather make an all-star team win an mvp and win a championship so i think there's some insight into this one <laughs> i think there's two things can be true one of them is that i think the number one thing that's most true about this is that the most improved award uh, often is almost like a secondary thing, sure. right? It's like this guy who wasn't, you know, we don't think much of him, and they made a real leap. He's and, really good, but maybe next year he'll get to that next yeah, level. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. And I think Michael Porter sees himself as a right-now star. And rightfully so. He's got that talent. I mean, there's some things he's got to do. And I, I think, don't know if he looks at himself as a star. I don't I don't know. Talent. A star talent. Okay. I, the, not the stuff that comes with What I'm saying is, I think he looks at it, and, and if you were to ask him, if you gave him the truth serum off the record and said, hey, w w an NBA rank, where do you want to be by the NBA end of the season? I think he's like, there's not 20 guys better than me. Sure. You know, and there, I think there are. But I think in his mind, that, and that's why when you say the most improved player, it could be the 50th best player, the 40th best player. I think he's like, no, man, I want to be in the conversation with the real good players, yeah. all-stars, MVPs, and champions, and and that. So I think it was both the, like, I'm not concerned about the individual award yeah. that much, but also it was the, um, that's a little below what I, I my sights are higher than that. Yeah. I'll say it for him, because he did not say this, I'm saying it, it's beneath him. It's beneath him a little, It's beneath yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure he'd love it, I'm sure it'd be awesome, but it, so, some guys... That might be the the thing they look back at their career and go. It was pretty awesome that I got to win that award. Right. Yeah. Right. I, think I don't, I don't think we should fish. ever hate on guys though for wanting to like be an all star. Right. No, 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 I don't either. Like, no, that's, I don't either. Uh, yeah, of course that's a goal. Like right. if you become an all star, that's that. That's I a, want Michael Porter. I yeah. also want him to be an all star. You know, <laughs> yeah, one same. one time, two time, three time all star Michael Porter Jr. That's big for guys. I, I was I was just mostly laughing at how he worked his way to the very PR polished version right, of the right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 He I do think that Michael Porter becoming an all star is the thing that changes the way the Nuggets are looked. Yeah. Murray could have maybe done this. I mean Murray could have become a Damian Lillard type figure. 
where people are just kind of enamored with him and maybe he or maybe even a Kyrie type figure where there's people that are like that's my favorite guy and and that bandwagon grows but I think Michael Porter is the one that you sell as a TV station <laughs> what the heck just happened? That was Rick, uh, Mark Bartlestein <laughs> being like, <laughs> don't talk about that contract. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a great well, chance for a break. Uh, let's, let's, when, let's hit a break. Yeah, let's hit a break here. <laughs> Kale's like, oh my God. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, let's see. Guys, they got some great deals going on at Solace Meds throughout the month of September. Can America Gummies, they're 25% off. Strange Tinctures are 20% off. Rocking Cartridges, 25% off. Glacier Concentrates, 20% off as well. You can get those deals at any of their four Colorado locations. They've got one in Wheat Ridge, one in Fort Collins, one off of Broadway, one on East Colfax, blocks away from the DNVR bar. When you drop the code DNVR20 at any of these locations as well, you're going to get 20% off your entire purchase. You're also going to get a King Cone or... Um, a solace, solace bar, bar with that purchase as well. So that's valid at any location. Drop the code DMVR20. Of course, they've got all those great deals going on throughout the month of September as well. If you've got questions about taking out a mortgage, if you want advice on just that entire industry, if it seems really stressful or complicated to buy a house right now, and it is for, for a lot of people out there, hit up the good folks at Chevalier Mortgage. Get set up with a free consultation at DNVR Mortgage. Dot com. Mike and Virginia Chevalier, they've been in the mortgage business forever. They all, they know all the ins and outs and know all the tricks of the trade. They can help you out, especially if you're a first time home buyer. So go to dnvrmortgage.com if you have any uh, questions about the whole process. Get signed up with a free consultation. Enter to win a free DNVR shirt or hat of your choice when you go to dnvrmortgage.com. And yeah, like I said, hit them up for any and every question about the mortgage process. Michael Chevalier, NMLS number 1931006. Virginia Chevalier, NMLS number 1910631. They're Denver people through and through just like us. So they know everything that there is to know about the mortgage uh, business. Also, if you're in the area, if you're stopping into the DNVR bar, uh, stop in, order up a burger. We've got a couple of them on the menu, a couple different types of burgers. Every burger here at DNVR comes with Hassel Cattle Company Wagyu beef, uh, the best beef around, and you can get it at the DNVR bar. If you're not local, you can go to HasselCattleCompany.com. Use the code DNVR10 for 10% off your order. They've got tons of different types of meats, uh, jerky flavors, beef bacon, New York strip. They got everything at HasselCattleCompany.com. Uh, go there, use the code DNVR10. You're going to get 10% off your order. You're also going to get uh, free shipping on any order over 200 bucks. Call up a couple friends, say, hey, let's get a Hassle Cattle Company order together. That's what we do here at TNVR. And like you can pull your mind together, get over 200 bucks, get free shipping, use the code DNVR10 for 10% off, and enjoy some Hassle Cattle Company. All right, we are back. By the way, I want to remind you guys here, one of the big things we have going on this weekend, our tailgate. Our first tailgate of the season is this weekend yep. uh, for the Broncos game, Broncos Jets. It's going to be fantastic. We already have like a hundred, almost a hundred people, I think, already committed to. I'm sure that number is going to even grow. Here's what we got: all you can eat pizza from sexy. Is it sexy pizza or sexy time pizza? <laughs> Sexy pizza. <laughs> Was that a real quick Se sexy, sexy time, time pizza? pizza. <laughs> It's like, why is it that much weirder than sexy pizza? It's, it's, so, it's, a, it's way weirder. <laughs> sexy time pizza. That's never going away. All you can eat, all you can eat pizza from sexy pizza. All you can drink beer from Breck from Breck Brewery. Guys, what more can you want? What's the price on? We have it pulled up right here. What was the price on? Is it thirty bucks? I think it's uh, twenty for just the tailgate and tw tw bus, but uh, tailgate bus. <laughs> So you, you, oh, the bus is sold out. So you can only go, man, because we also have a party bus. So next time you guys want to get earlier, maybe we'll end up doing two party buses where you come to the DNVR yeah. bar, maybe you have a drink or two with some buddies, and then you get bust to the arena because you know how, what a pain it can be trying to find parking right. at the arena. And, and Uber, you don't want to deal with that, uh, oh, man. Oh, the line is so long to get in. So, um, but right now you can go straight to the tailgate uh, and then join us hours. You know, we'll have hours before the game having a great time. Or you come to the bar and then ride the bus over. So make this part of your routine. We really want this. I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. I'm going to be, be there, there too. Yeah. We're all going to be there. Like we're we're begging you guys, come hang out with us. It's going to be so much fun. We'll probably play some cornhole. We're going to drink a bunch. We'll probably do a fan vote. We'll probably do all kinds of uh, of fun stuff. So Can't wait. 
Can't wait. Sexy time. Sexy pizza. time pizza, baby. <laughs> Sexy time. Uh, let's get to Jeff Green. He also spoke today. Um, I my biggest comment from watching Jeff Green was I really don't know that much about Jeff Green's personality. You yeah. know, and and so all of these, I'm kind of like, oh, he's a little different than I kind of expected. Um, not better or worse. I'm just saying, like, oh, it's kind of cool getting to know his personality a little bit. What what stands out to you, vote? He had uh, more to say than I would have guessed. He mm. is, I think, of the Millsap cloth of the voice is quieter and okay. it sounds soft spoken. Yeah. But if you're listening, he's actually saying plenty. Okay. Um, I quite enjoyed Harrison probed a little bit on his perspective on the Nuggets and why he he joined them. Uh, and I thought his answer was um, was really insightful and really cool for more reasons than one. So I really like talking to Jeff today. Jeff Green's a really smart guy. Yeah. And you don't hang around the league and you're not on a good team, a contender year in, year out like he is if you're not. He takes really good care of his body. Um, he devotes a lot of time and money to that. And he's just, I think, really smart about how he sees basketball and but also the business side of things. Sure. And so... Um, I think there's a lot of reasons he came to Denver, but it just seems like a natural spot for him. A really good team where he's got a defined role, where you know he can play a similar role to what he has over the last several years. He's, he's going to fit in well on the court, and he's got a personality that fits with the Nuggets in the locker room too. So it just makes sense. A lot of things right. with Jeff Green just make sense. I liked – we've sort of talked about this on the show, sort of wondering how this goes for players, but – he talked about from the outside perspective looking in, playing against the Nuggets, um, and how he said the locker room, yeah. the front office, and how you could get a feel from the vibe just from the outside in. And he actually went on to say the team tagline, they play hard, they play for each other. He talked about as you get older as a player, you want to just cut out all the nonsense and all the noise. Right. And so he referred to flying under the radar in Denver and then clarified he thinks the team itself can contend, but he knows they're not going to be talked about the way Brooklyn's and, and L.A. are, and that's just fine by him. And Jeff it, Green watches a lot of ESPN. That's yeah. what I learned today. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, of course, NBA yeah. players, that's where they go. Um, but it is interesting contrasting him being in Brooklyn last year to coming to Denver and like choosing Denver. And I do think that was the biggest revelation is it's kind of like, look, I'm sure Denver really wanted him and there was some recruiting process and this or that. But I think that also I, I wonder if he's just kind of like, I want to change speeds a little bit. I want out of Brooklyn. I don't want to be in LA. He even mentioned the Lakers. He's just like, you know, the teams, everybody, those same teams, everybody's going to talk about Lakers or this or that. And he's like, no, I wanted to go somewhere else. So. I, I think that's kind of cool. I mean, I can only imagine coming from Brooklyn where you don't know if Kyrie Irving's going to be at the game the next night and, and just all the hoopla there and the personalities and how big right. of a spotlight is on you at every game, every practice, every shoot around compared to Denver where it's just totally different. I want It's got to be just um, you know, a breath of fresh air. You can just take a deep breath and relax a little, totally. I would think. Do you guys think I, I posited that perhaps he and Jokic will become friends and Jokic talking about how much he hates fame and Jeff Green being like kind of chiller out here. I could see it, man. I'm just saying I could see it a little bit. Eh, Jeff know. Green, Jermichael Green, Jokic, the no paparazzi club. The no paparazzi club. Yeah, the we're no not out new for friends. It. Yeah, we're not yeah. we're not looking for it. Going backwards a little bit, I do uh, Bones Highland came up when he was asked, I mean Will Barton was asked specifically about Bones Highland, but also Michael Porter brought up Bones unprovoked and just said that he looks really good like he's a player and he's excited about him. So I thought that was interesting that Bones got some love today from veteran players, well one veteran and then Michael Porter. Um, I just thought that was neat. As a real hooper, he's like a real hoopers no kind of guy where he's like he loves the game and he likes. I mean, to do of that. course. <laughs> like, and Harrison just lights up. And um, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> look, look, he's beaming where, right now. Where, getting the top hooper. But that's something we've heard um, also f from just talking with people who are watching these open runs. Bones Highland says he goes five and zero with Jokic yesterday. He's he's talking yeah. a big game, but I've heard he's. Looked legit. He, he's looked like he belongs. Right. Everything he said about, yeah, Nuggets are, coaches are saying, I, I look like I belong. I look like I'm doing well. That's true. Everybody's saying that he looks like we expected him to. He looks good. Right. It's exciting, so it's, man. Yeah, it is It is exciting. Michael Porter wanting Bones to go work out with him. I just like it, man. It is fun. No, that was Bull he said that about. 
Oh, it was Bull. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that oh, was yeah. something we didn't hit on with Porter about Bull. Do we, do we want to do the go, Bull go, thing? Go backwards. Let's do it. This comment. Um, what is it? Day 47 of the Hooper Street. <laughs> 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 we might as well pencil us I've in for day 100. It's the coming, counter man. in the upper right-hand yeah, corner. Yeah, Hooper talk. <laughs> Hooper, Hooper quarter. Um, I'm sick that day. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, like I don't know if I have the energy to do the Bull thing like a, a lot this year. <laughs> I hear he's in the best shape of his life. <laughs> but um, Porter, I thought did have an interesting comment he was asked who has stood out in these open runs and he was talking about bowl how he's blocking shots how he's moving around but the most insightful aspect of his answer was how uh porter said that well, i'm just gonna get the quote up here so i don't uh mess it up he said he could be a big part of this team and help us do big things it's just gonna take a mindset change with him which i think he's ready to embrace and then porter went on to say how um, he's playing with a good attitude, a good energy. He's texting Bull, telling him to come to the gym with him at night. So Porter's in, in insinuating a little bit, maybe that there's been a bit of a mindset change. Yeah, I don't know. We'll God, see. I hope so. That'd be cool if there was. I hope so. Yeah, uh, but um, yeah, en- encouraging stuff. No. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, last guy we have is Austin Rivers. Um, always f- good to hear from him. He's always you know just a really insightful guy. Um, he talks to a group of people as if they're each his old friend. Yeah, he really you know does. I mean? yeah, he's like, are you talking that. to me right now? Yeah, like yeah me? for sure. No. I also love, this is another thing about Zoom. He sits down and he goes, hey guys, how's everybody doing? None of us can talk. We're all muted. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward, man. It's like really awkward. Uh, yeah. Austin Rivers, anything major to take away? Well... It, like if we're talking about sub, like substantive like line item things, he said he thinks he's going to be the backup shooting guard. He said he thinks he's going to be in the rotation. No big surprise, but um, we probably know exactly what that bench unit's going to look like or a, a little bit. So uh, he's going to play. He's going to have minutes. And the biggest thing he talked about was. Like a lot of guys who returned to Denver, it seemed like a no-brainer. He said, obviously, Denver is an awesome city or something like that. Like, he didn't say it almost as in a way of, like, you know, sometimes guys are, like, or bands, they play the show. And they're like, you know what I love? Insert whatever city I'm in. Charlotte. Yeah, I love when I'm here. Such an underrated yeah, town. Yeah, underrated town here. Uh, Mobile, Alabama. But he's a, he threw it in there, like, casually. Almost like, he was just like, you know, and obviously Denver's just an awesome city or something. Like Everybody knows that or something. And I was kind of like, do, do they? Does everybody know Denver's an awesome city? I think it's changing. Yeah. I think the word's out. Yeah, the no. word's out. But, um, yeah, he made it sound like it was a no-brainer for him to resign. There's obviously minutes to be had. And he loves it here. He, he loves the culture. He loves the team. He loves the locker room. Loves the players. Loves uh, the front office. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Austin Rivers is, is big about just being real. Because he's been through a bunch, of, and he talks about this a lot. But the last couple of years for him have just been a whirlwind. Um, you know, going to different teams, being on his couch with the Thunder while you know his agents looking for a landing spot for him. Right. Um, but now he feels comfortable. He f- feels like he's in a good spot. He's, he's got a good role. Things have settled down for him in his life. He got engaged over the summer, so it's he, he's in a good spot. I feel like. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, uh, he did say he thinks this might be his strongest chance of winning it all. Great, great one. And he's played with he's some played some good teams. players and some good teams. You're right. Uh, so I, I actually considered that almost like a stronger endorsement than a part of the core who's been here for so many years, just kind of using the company line. Right. Uh, kind of. Because really sometimes f- you don't know if you're a contender. Like the Timberwolves are going to come into camp, and some of the young guys are going to be like, "I think we can win a championship." Like you don't know what that means. Right. Right. Anthony Edwards. Like you don't know what it takes to win a championship. But I, you're right. Austin Rivers did know this, and I will say that it was something that when he said it, it made me think about all the different veterans that are on this team. And and you know when you're not a championship team or when you're fringe or this or that. Yeah. And him being like, hey, this might be my best chance I've ever had. Yeah, and getting some of these guys that have played those roles on those teams already right. in the past, maybe there's some validation there. Uh, he also, funny moment, and Joel asked him a really good question about Rivers' comments last year about perception of players, particularly he and MPJ. So that gets him rolling on MPJ. I'm not sure how this worked, if MPJ had just walked in the room or not, 
as Rivers is talking about whether or not MPJ is a good guy. <laughs> you can hear Porter <laughs> in the background. I'm a good guy, right? I just thought that was a hilarious <laughs> moment. Um, I have no idea if he was in the room the whole time or not. But. <laughs> can you imagine being asked a question like, Harrison, do you think Vote is a good guy? Like, yeah. do you think he's a, like, as a person? About those rumors that he kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And of course, he had that tweet that last year. He had that one tweet. Look, I like. wasn't, I wasn't he, with the company for that, that so I can't, yeah, I I can't that, speak on that. But since I got here, I can tell you, I see a real team player. He's uh, funny. Well, not funny, but he's he laughs, laughs at people who are funny. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, lastly, I, I sent a tweet to Kale. You could pull it up here because George Carl, our friend of the show, and also my co-host and keeping it one thousand, he put a thing out here as we've always seen. We've seen this comment so many different times. Can you make that so I can read? Like, just kind of zoom in a little bit. Oh, no, this no. Is different. I doubt Jokic is motivated by such things, but he could be one of the most disrespected reigning MVPs in NBA history. And we get Popeye Jones, new coach, new coach who's on Twitter. By the way, a whole new world. A coach that's on Twitter. Are we sure this is actually? Popeye You're right. This Jones might be parody. Account? I think the first uh, line. What just of happened it to is, it? Where did it go? Oh, can confirm Popeye. he cares. Can confirm he cares. <laughs> uh, and then and then he signed it, PJ. Yeah, I think the first line says it's a parody account. Oh, it is a it is yeah. a parody one. Oh man, who makes a so parody account of Popeye, Popeye Jones? Jones? Somebody did this. Oh, what a bummer! I was excited for this because somebody sent it to me while the show was going, so I wasn't able to like. Let's just like, oh, let's sweet. just pretend it's the real Popeye. Popeye Jones. Jones on Twitter. I'm so excited for this. KD, friend of the show, Queen of Nuggets Twitter. KD got got by that account the other day, and I thought the same thing you did. Said because he is a coach, though you know. Well, can't even blame her because who would make that yeah. account? Also, oh, look at God. the tweets from this account. It's all it's like it's all down the first First of all, the profile picture is an awkward selfie that you could definitely see an assistant coach taking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> secondly, but you're right. He's the perfect level of fame where you're like, he, yeah, nobody's doing this. He ends every tweet with PJ, which you could see <laughs> an old like, assistant I coach wish doing. It was. Are you kidding me? It makes me like Ryan Bowen's not going to be on Twitter. He's too old. He is on Ryan Bowen's on Twitter. He has. Does he tweet? Uh, no, I don't really think so. That's what I mean. I want somebody that's like actually. T is there any like Steve Kerr tweets every now and then? It's Steph J yeah. uh, Van Gundy, Stan Van Gundy would, but I mean they they were they only tweet like New York Times articles. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like like this or that. I want some coach that's online the way like Kevin Durant is. <laughs> that's like yeah. Yeah, we didn't worry when we had to put a box in one and blah blah blah. Like just talking shit online. Yeah. It would be great. Paul George, well, remember if, when you hit the side of the backboard? If you have an account that some people think is a parody. You could probably get away with that. Oh, can you imagine if Tim Conley actually ran the Tim Conley right. parody? Like if account? that really was Popeye <laughs> Jones, but he said this was a parody. We're five layers deep on the inception here. Yeah. He is an if imposter. If I know it's a parody, but himself. they know, but so I know, but imposter? they don't know. <laughs> it's a question for the philosophers. I'm uh, watching the Cardinals game. So I don't oh, know. my God. This is terrible. All right, we'll get out of here, guys. This was a fun one, man. Um, really an interesting media day. It's our last media day of the week, though, guys. Next week, uh, there will be a new media day. Oh, okay. We don't have to wait till next year. <laughs> so we, we have another media week. day coming up. Monday might actually be a grind because who do we still have to listen? If we still have to, Michael Malone, Tim Conley. We've got to get um, Jamal Murray. Jamal. Who else do we have? Faku. Faku. Michael. J. Mike. Bowl. Bull, uh, Zeke, Zeke Najee, Greg, uh, no, Greg no. Whittington, no. <laughs> we're going to get Greg Whittington no. back. Um, so there's a lot to get to next week. It'll probably be a long one. It'll probably be a little bit later, but um, tomorrow we do have casual Friday. Is it Thursday? It is Thursday. Yeah. All right. It's casual it's Friday. Correct. It's tomorrow. Very excited for it. Vote's going to be taking the lead on that one. Oh, listen to this lineup for casual Friday. Vote, D-line, and Dev. Oof. It doesn't get more casual. Yeah, I don't know. Don't hold your breath for a lot of Nuggets talk tomorrow. <laughs> uh, should be a lot of fun. NBA rank will be even further yeah. along. Oh, I can't wait a to lot hear of that. rankings to discuss yeah. tomorrow. A lot of rankings we'll to fun. discuss. All right, everybody. Hit the like button on the way out. See you tomorrow.